Well, good afternoon. Um, it's a really delight to be here to celebrate Richard's uh, first retirement. Um, I've been waiting for this for the last two years, not because I want to see Richard leaving, it's the complete opposite, because his new office is right opposite to mine. So I should be able to work more closely over the next 30 years. Um, I first met Richard in 1987 at the tobacco conference in Tianjin. I was a medical student and uh, over coffee break, I just volunteered myself and uh, approached Richard. And uh, subsequently he said he wanted to come to talk to me more um, to Shanghai. And then after that, he offered said, come over to Oxford for a year. I couldn't believe this is a new. I said, it must be true. I never know him, he is such a famous professor. And after just uh, maybe a couple of hours discussion, he offered me to come to Oxford. It's like dream. But today, you know, I'm still here after 30 years. Um, so with uh, the, this title, I hope to give you a brief account of uh, extraordinary, you know, collaboration uh, in China. <coughs> Uh, which was initiated by Richard and Rory about uh, started during the early 1980s, uh, which is still continuing and also growing as well. I mean, taken together, um, it probably represents some of the largest and longest uh, medical research in China. Um, this study covers primarily chronic disease, not communicable disease, because by the time Richard went to China, it was too late to study them. So as show, this slide shows the patterns of mortality in China, 2010, that 9 million deaths at all age, only 400,000 from communicable disease, half in the childhood in the poor rural areas, 0.8 million injuries, but 8 million out of 9 million due to a wide range of uh, non-communicable disease, half actually uh, uh, died in middle age. Um, 2 million from cancer, 2 million cardiac, 2 million stroke, and 1 million COPD. I stole this uh, slide from Richard and show it's his typical style. Bit bold, very easy to read. So, so this is actually where we are now. Um, can we half them? To what extent they compare with the past and with the rest of the world? So again, this is a part of Richard's work. Um, shows extraordinary changes for mortality over the last 40 years in some of the biggest countries. Uh, at middle age, uh, 50 to 69. So this is China, very spectacular decrease. I think still continuing, especially among uh, never smokes. So which is uh, slightly behind UK, USA, but it's catching up quite rapidly. The, the, I just read some articles a few days ago by WHO. If it continues, by 2030, China will catch up with America in terms of uh, 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 life expenses as well. I'm sure you all agree, Richard is a cause of these spectacular changes, improvement, not only in China, but also uh, globally, due to prevention and uh, uh, better uh, treatment for many conditions as well. But China is not uniform. Um, there's a huge, well-documented and unexplained variation of mortalities. So as shown here with the two common cancers, esophageal cancer, nasal pharynx cancer, both are very rare in UK or in some other parts of China, but they are very common in certain other areas as shown in this uh, red uh, spot. And in these areas, the mortality rates are probably five to ten folds as high as in neighboring counties or regions. We still don't really understand because this is uh, among females, they don't drink, they don't smoke. Apparently, the known risk factors cannot explain the huge uh, heterogeneity. I think the future will be very difficult to predict because there's favorable changes, but also unfavorable changes, particularly given the rapid rising burden of tobacco. So this shows the annual Chinese cigarette consumption uh, production uh, over the last 60 years. Um, this is the time when Richard first arrived. For the fake news, people may claim Richard is the cause for this increase. <laughs> but, uh, but, but as a matter of fact, Richard is the first one, first West epidemiologist to warn China, Chinese government, about this forthcoming tobacco epidemic. I still remember many meetings, still recall many meetings Richard had with the house minister. I went together, at least the four or five of them, Chen Mingzhang, Chen Yu Li, you know, to Chen Zhu. And Richard, when Richard sat down at dinner table, normally, first thing he did, reach his pocket and open up a, a piece of a paper. 
with a very striking figures or statistics and uh, to talk over through the meal. And although the meal very nice, and the day I said, what, what meal do you enjoy? I said, I forgot, I eat anything. So I think it, it's not very easy in China trying to you know, get the momentum going on tobacco control. Even among many epidemiologists, very well known, I know, they don't believe smoking is that bad. They believe smoking kills Americans, British, but not Chinese. Chinese is somehow very special. I mean, the truth is actually, the simple fact is that they feel to recognize the delayed effects, as we well described this morning. And uh, because you're not going to see huge impact uh, 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 mortality, at least for another 30, 40 years. So after many talks, and Richard realized the only thing is actually try to get local evidence. So this is uh, what we did together, Richard, initially joined in the uh, uh, 1990s, a series of larger studies. First on tobacco, uh, case control studies, prospect studies, initially no blood, eventually blood-based, around with many other studies, larger clinical trials as well. So this just summarizes you know, a range of studies that have been conducted over the last 30 years under the uh, 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 leadership of Richard and Rory. Total nine population-based studies, uh, total over two million participants. Some are just, you know, uh, descriptive epidemiology, some are uh, case control, and more and more into large, long-term blood-based process study, not only smoking, but a range of other things, as well as uh, many large-scale randomized trials, and the total with over 100,000 pat uh, patients recruited. I mean, together, they have uh, generated a lot of publications, and many thousands are coming over the next 10, 20 years, but together, they have a huge impact on disease prevention and treatment. And for example, and this is a Chinese cardiac study with 46,000 patients recruited from within China and demonstrate the benefits of combined antiplex therapy. That's led to the change of guideline by FDA as well. So it has saved many, many patients' lives as well. So it's not possible to go through all of them. So this is just a list of the key publications in the four top medical journals, plus two big monograph, each weigh probably five kilos. And uh, um, so in the interest of time, I'm just going to show one particular result on tobacco because that's one of the main scene uh, for the past, but also for the future as well. So this is a contrasting male-female trans tobacco, which bring together two <coughs> large cohort study, Kadori, and also the early study with the 15 years apart. So help to document the, is the, the evolving epidemic in China. So this is a summary. Um, smoking will cause about 20% of all adult male deaths now, which is increased from 10% uh, 20 years ago, based on old evidence. And uh, the uh, tobacco attributed proportion of deaths is rising in men. But interestingly, completely differently, unexpectedly, it's low and a decrease among Chinese women, because Chinese women are much more sensible, intelligent. Um, <laughs> And although overall adult mortality rates are falling, as the adult population grows and the proportion of male deaths due to smoke increase, the annual number of tobacco attributed deaths will rise from about 1 million now to 2 million by 2030 and to 3 million in 2050, unless there's a very widespread cessation as well. I think this is based on the hard local evidence. And also prediction is very reliable because we got a subset population, they start young, they own cigarettes, their risk is almost the same as what we see in the West. Um, but we're not going to stop here because the next paper already got agreement with Richard over the next six months is to continue working on this, not on mortality. For the first time, we're able to study morbidity as well. In the Kodori, we capture you know, almost a million episodes of hospitalization. So we're going to study beyond death into a range of other diseases, probably five conditions, each with the 500 different cases. So I think there will be a lot of novel findings, even for these very well-researched topics as well. So the study is based on the Kodori, which is a continue. Um, so this is a huge undertaking, um, uh, involved over half a million participants, recruited in 2004 and 8, and from 10 diverse areas. Five rural, five urban, from freezing north in Harbin to tropical source, from uh, coastal cities, um, uh, well developed to inland and rural areas with very different disease patterns and different stages of economic development. 
So this is a huge undertake, very big, but it's done very, very carefully and, and very high quality because it's all about, you know, over 90 different IT systems, everything the electron, no paper involved, with a lot of data captured at baseline and the periodic race surveys. We have done two, and the third one is coming um, uh, by questionnaire, by measurements. Increasingly, we are turning sample into the data, genetic, proteomics, metabolomics, and also linked to other data as well. And the most important things we are now linked to not only mortality, we've got 45,000 deaths, or less than 5,000 lost to follow up, but a wide range of other non fetal conditions. In 10 years, we have captured almost you know, 900,000 hospitalizations, including 15,000 cataract surgeries, 15,000 uh, uh, osteoporosis, fracture as well. But this has been a huge success, uh, I have to say. But this comes in retrospect of a very long, bumpy journey. Uh, it's probably since uh, uh, to, uh, the 1980s. I remember Richard said, uh, before I arrived, he made first application. And during the 1990s, in a many uh, a field application um, to, the, to get the funding for such a study. Because no one wants to fund study. It's too big, too vague, no hypothesis not relevant for British or Westerns, even though many people do believe the results from zebra fish or mouse results. Um, even, when we, even when we got the funding through the help of uh, Judith, you know, from Kadori, um, I promise, we still couldn't get the uh, uh, approval. It took us two years to sort of approval. And uh, we just got a letter from foundation said, if you don't get the permission for this collaboration, and the whole funding will be cancelled. That was actually on 10th May 2002. So although my co our colleagues in China tried very hard to try to persuade the ministries to prove these uh, wonderful uh, studies, but on the, on the 29th of April 2002, we heard very disappointingly, and uh, you know, the committee decided not to approve the study. Again, the same reasons, too big, too risk, you know, DNA, uh, and uh, it, it very sensitive issues in, Ch in China. So Rich and I decided to go to China. So we went there, we spent two, a week, we said we probably could do something, but we end up nowhere. You know, even Ministry of Health, uh, Science and Technology relate to see us for various reasons that you know, it, it's, it, it's not convenient. Um, eventually, we got this one, on the 10th of May, 2002, we got approval. So it's like magic. I still remember, um, you know, it, on early morning of 10th, which is at 2 o'clock, we had a couple of drinks. We said, tomorrow is the last day. We managed to see the health vice minister, Wang Jiefu. I mean, if he got proof of us, we're not going to get the permission letter within the same day. And the, the Kadori Foundation may still cancel. So we said, well, you know, Let's pretend that we get approval. Let's, pre you know, everything goes well. Let's draft the letter, approval letter. So this is actually what we did. You know, we worked for one, two hours until like 3.30 three, three in the morning. We, you know, we draft on behalf of the Ministry of Health. So this is approval letter. And then we went to see. And suddenly, you know, we got permission. And we, five o'clock, we got this letter, this fax back to the uh, uh, Kadori Foundation. They said, OK, the study can go ahead. So it, it's very extraordinary. I mean, you don't normally tell, you know, you've got, uh, uh, politics is exciting, very difficult. And uh, I mean, I've learned quite a lot from Richard through the process of how to do diplomacies in China, to be persistent and uh, 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 believe yourself and never give up. So this is where we are. There are many other similar stories I don't want to go through. So I think over the next 30 years, I mean, we're going to have a huge amount of research done, not only by us, by collaborators, by external researchers, and not only hypothesis testing, but also hypothesis generating as well, through conventional prospect analysis of uh, big causes, a wide range of disease, nasty case control study, blood-based biomark for different disease, and into GWAS, FIWAS for drug discovery, Mendelian randomization, and a, a wide range of things. So for the first time, we're able to study not just obvious, but also non-obvious. I think to end, my talk, I just want to show one final result, and Richard, I've been working, working with Richard and Aona over the last two years. 
we know from you know, David, you know, the heavy drink can kill you, and a lot of problems. But the myth of the last 50 years is moderate drinking, light moderate drinking. And if, if, as epidemiology studies, we keep finding this a J-shaped association. And the, you know, the, 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 this is a current drink, this is a, a X drink, non-drink, occasional drink. We couldn't get rid of that, despite you know, Rich's effort to get rid of confounding in you know, reverse cause, still there. So I think the only thing to answer that question is, is this causal? If you want to answer reliably, it's by doing randomized control trial which may not be feasible or even controversial. So another thing we can do is modern epidemiology is to bring together genetics, which can be done quite nicely in Chinese because Chinese, like me, we carry flashy gene. We cannot tolerate alcohol. With the one base pair change in these two genes, ALDH and ADH from G to A, LU, and we greatly reduce alcohol tolerability. So of the nine possible genotypes, we see over 50 fold and the variation is alcohol consumption. So we can use that, no confounding, no reverse causality, we can actually test whether this is a causal. I mean, unfortunately, for today's event, it's not convenient to show the results because I don't want to spoil Richard's reception, dinner, and a drink. <laughs> um, so I'll probably just show this one. So we've been working in a complete flat out. So the, all the secrets are this file Richard sent. Um, <laughs> What I'm sure is this one. Look at the time. This is a three, you know, almost 4 a.m. in the morning. He sent to, to my, I couldn't, I mean, I already went to sleep. It was too late for me, but Rich is still working at a three, you know, a.m. in the morning. Um, maybe after reception drink, Richard can give a, you know, give a talk about ARCO findings. And uh, so, uh, I'm not going to show that. So, very last slide, I'd just like to acknowledge the members of Rich's extended family in China. It's been, you know, 30 years and many generations. And now we've got fifth, fourth generations joining us. So this is uh, Richard. Uh, the first study, Richard started with the uh, Chen calling Campbell Ecologic Service to big monograph. And this is a Madden Chen. Sadly, she died age 91 just a, a few weeks ago giving Richard a professorship well before the Oxford. So, uh, and this is another big celebration when Richard received a very pre prestigious award and with many other colleagues, Liu Boqi, Niu Su Lu, they're all being uh, uh, Yang Gong Huan working together many decades on tobacco. So this is a Richard lecture. And this is time I remember we tried to sort out the permission and the China CDC. And this is the best way now to get Richard working on papers because he's busy helping others. The time either early evening, early morning, or get him onto the train. Now the ch journey in China is very pleasant. You've got bullet trains, very comfortable. This is uh, when I remember we're working for a final large tobacco paper. So this is a Professor Lee, you know, the, the co lead PR China tobacco, uh, uh, the Kadori Bai Ban, Li Xing. Many of them cannot be with us today, but they sent their best wishes and also have a small patient maybe towards the end of the session. So the family is growing, and there will be grandchildren and grandchildren, and uh, years. And personally, I'm very grateful to Richard for his uh, for teaching me not only epidemiology but also statistics, astronomy, and for many sleepless nights while working not working on epidemiology but also trying to translate Chinese poem into English. It's uh, still lots of things not done perfectly. I want to continue. Um, I really charge this. Uh, this journey is incredible, and uh, that will uh, uh, remember that for the rest of my life. Thank you very much.